Yesterday, I had a bit of a scare. I, uh, for the first time ever, YouTube uh, took down one of my videos and it, <laughs> it got me a little bit frightened. Um, I do kind of skirt the edges of the rules. It's kind of the gray area of the rules. There's, there's do not do this. There's we want you to do that, right? Don't to have videos of people, naked people smoking crack. That's bad. Um, have videos, uh, positive videos reviewing Google Pixel phones. We love that. And in between is educational videos about, uh, about drugs like Salvia Divinorum. And so I'm always skirting that edge, but the, I have never actually had one literally taken down. But uh, it, I was doing a review of uh, Salvia Seller, and which is a a Salvia retailer, and I kind of got excited because I think it's my favorite. Go watch that other video. I I up I re-uploaded it today with more subtle titles and stuff. But it really got me thinking um, about how much a how much my channel means to me. Uh, it's really my main voice now, and uh, it's where I do my teaching and my artistic work, and everything that I'm giving to the world is through this channel, and Google can erase it all. I even use their, I use their, um, their uh, cloud service, I even use their mobile service. Google could erase me with one little button. And the really crazy part is if they ever did erase me with one button, it wouldn't be because be a human decided that I was bad. It would be because an algorithm made a mistake and thought that I was bad and there'd be nothing I could do about it. Ah, so that's a little frightening, but I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm dealing with it. It's the next day and I, I'm still here and I'm still surviving. Anyway. Just as you know, life is very delicate, especially when you've got robots that can erase your life accidentally by pushing a button. But, you know, I guess that's life. It's a delicate thing. And I never know. I've never, I've never made a video into a mirror before, and I don't know if I should be looking at myself or looking at the camera at that angle or looking at the camera at that angle or looking at my water, looking at my coffee. Or looking at this pipe that's got salvia in it. I think uh, that's the one that I'll do. I like to gather myself a little bit. Not to the point of making myself nervous, but I just like to show respect for the medicine. And, and note my vulnerability. The two things that could push, push a button and destroy me are Google... And the salvia if it wanted to. But it never does. After 30 seconds or so, you start to feel it. I always think in the beginning, it reminds me of tobacco, just a tobacco head rush. But I can gauge where I'm at at about 30 seconds usually. Even though it doesn't fully hit till about 60 seconds. I'm going to hit that a little bit harder. This is 10x. I usually do stronger.
when I'm doing a like a daily meditation with Salvia, I don't trip too much about how much I feel it. Because it's almost like a, I mean, I do feel it, but it's almost like a Eucharistic kind of ritual. It's as much a ritual to begin a meditation practice as it is a drug to become intoxicated with. Then higher, more dramatic uh, uh, sessions are only occasionally. What I'm choosing to meditate on is vulnerability. I'm seeing myself as a flower. It's just weaving around in the breeze. If you're participating with me, I, I invite you to concentrate on a single flower Um, you know, in the ground by itself. Well, not necessarily by itself, I suppose. But just vulnerable there. Vulnerable to the elements. And yet pushing out and becoming what it can anyway. There's no protecting yourself. Your body mind is just a moment in time. Put up the biggest firewall in the world, and there's still nothing protecting you from a meteor crushing crushing the earth. You hide behind a castle, arm yourself with an Uzi and a katana, and what happens? It's just the universe collapses in on itself. Accept that you're just a moment in time, a beautiful little flower, doing its best. Vulnerability is strength, because it's honest. The body-mind is constantly changing. It's utterly mortal. Your body-mind is utterly mortal. Not only will it die someday, it's dying every moment. Changing what it is now changes moment to moment to moment to moment. But this is not a sad thing, or it doesn't have to be. Creation itself is in constant flux. And you're part of that. You're part of the story being told. The story of creation, the story of the universe. like a biblical character who's only 
who's only there for a few pages or less. That's your relationship with the narrative, the grand narrative of the universe. But you wouldn't be there if, at all if you weren't worth it. To be part of the grand narrative is finite, but it's also a great honor. And to witness witnesses and seize every moment of your life. Your body mind, finite body mind life exists within a stream of consciousness that is worth paying attention to and that's why you do it. Do you ever feel like you're not noticed? It's not true. You are noticed. You're the one doing the noticing. The conscious field sitting with and blessing every, every detail. And you can identify with the body mind, which is great, the little flower. But you can also choose to identify with the conscious field that is doing the witnessing. And you've got access to both of these modes of living. I'm going to wiggle my fingers a little bit, move my knees, punch my hand, get started with the rest of my day. I tell you though, that is, this is the 10X from Salvia uh, Cellar and uh, it's fine, but um, I should, I should be smoking 20X, I think. I'm a big boy. I deserve it. See you later.